stand up and join us this morning? If you join online, welcome to Tree of Life in Flutterville, Texas.
us pray. Father, we bless you, God. We thank you, Lord, for this day. We're here, oh God, to celebrate the name of Jesus Christ, the very presence of your grace and goodness, God, upon your people. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that has taken sin from us as far as east is from the west. We praise you, God, for the new covenant. We thank you, Lord God, the promises that are yes and amen have been, oh God, brought for us by that precious blood upon the cross. Let us, oh God, never take for granted what you've done for us. We thank you, Lord God, that you're our Abba, Father, and Daddy God. You're the God of relationships. You're the one that sits closer than a brother. You can bring God times of refreshing to your people in this hour, in this season, as only you can do. We praise you, God. We thank you for this. Thank you, Lord God. Remember, servers come to the front now. We're going to be uh, serving communion this first Sunday of the month of May. I'm going to be reading here from uh, Luke chapter 22. So as I'm reading these scriptures, you can feel free on the left and right. If you're a born again believer in Jesus Christ, that's all I'm seeing is required to receive this communion here as a symbol of the, the body, the blood of Jesus Christ that was given to us on the cross over 2,000 years ago, but still speaks today. And so you can feel free to come to find a file up here and just take a cup and the bread is on the bottom of the cup. There's two cups that are there. Just please hang on to those. We'll take this communion together in a moment. You that are watching online, I want to welcome all you folks that are watching as well. You can find something in your house there to celebrate this with us. Again, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Just find something to drink and maybe some bread or a little cracker there perhaps as well. Luke chapter 22, verse 14 is right before Christ died upon the cross. It's called the Last Supper. And it says, when the hour had come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And there's a whole lot of whole message right there in itself there. But that word fervent desire, it means there was a burning inside the very bones, the very heart, the very spirit of Jesus Christ. Because he prophetically knew that he's about to do something that would cause him to be in true communion with the Father for the first time. The veil would be ripped in two that separates mankind from God. And all of a sudden, man can start talking to God in a spiritual face-to-face -face type way, like he could not back before the veil would be ripped in two in a, in a few hours, in a few days down the road. Then verse 17, or verse 16 says, For I say to you, I will no longer eat of this until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took the cup, he gave thanks, and said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took the bread, he gave thanks, and broke it also, gave it to them, and said, This is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup at supper, and he said, This cup is a new covenant of my blood, which is now shed for you. Now we praise God because we know that the uh, bread represents the body of Jesus Christ. And I've told you folks before that there's a prophetic picture there of all the curses that were broken. The piercings upon his brow, the thorns were the, what sprung up when man sinned back in the Garden of Eden. Every curse was broken from that day. Also the uh, piercings upon his side by the soldier's spear represents oppressive governments. God's got power over oppressive governments. Doesn't matter if it's a Republican, Democrat, or Communist running a country, God can still move by His Spirit and still see a harvest being reaped and have His way. Amen? Then the piercings in His hands and His feet talk about the, the toil of, of oppressive uh, cultures and so forth around to the labor, the work that man would be doing by the sweat of His brow. Now, God gives us grace. No matter what job God gives us, He gives us grace for that job as well. But also the spitings upon his body by the fists of the soldiers and people around him. Those bruisings there because the iniquities have been paid for from our bloodline. Our grandparents and our parents, all those things that have passed through the blood into our soul have been broken by the precious body of Jesus Christ. And so we give thanks and praise for him for what he's done for us. Let's take this bread in our hand. Just hold this to God, to up to God and just give him thanks for the precious body of Jesus now, Father, we thank and praise you, God, for your sending your Son, the one who knew no sin, who became sin for us, that we might become what is called the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. 
We give thanks and praise and healing as the children spread. And that by the stripes upon the back of Jesus Christ, every disease has been broken and paid for and can be healed, O oh God, taken from us. We praise you and thank you for the price paid by your son Jesus. Let's take this bread together. Now, Lord, we know your word tells us that this blood represents a new covenant, sonship, as a joint heir of Jesus Christ, as a son and daughter of God. We know the Father's blood is what flows through our veins in the spiritual sense. We praise you, God, that our sins are gone. Well, they were like crimson, God, that were now white as snow in the spiritual realm because of the blood of a lamb. But also your blood has given us a victory over death and hell and the grave. That no foul work of hell can triumph over us because the blood is a weapon to be used against him. Because there's power even today in the blood of Jesus Christ. But thank you, Lord God, your blood speaks from the grave that was shed over 2,000 years ago of salvation, of adoption, of covenant, of redemption, of blessing. We praise God you've joined us together as joint heirs with Jesus forever and evermore by the precious blood of the Lamb. Let's take this cup together and give thanks to him. Praise God. Our usher's going to get the tables by. You can, let, you can lay your cups down on the floor somewhere near you there. We'll click with it after the service is over. We're going to have the uh, children be to dismiss to go upstairs to children's ministry at this time. The youth are staying in here like they do once a month. Let's stand up here and sing one more song of praise and worship to God. Let's give him thanks and praise for his goodness and mercy upon his people. Yeah. 
this morning and his wonderful deeds for men for he satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with good things God loves to fill the hungry have you ever been hungry no don't look at me and say no not me I've been hungry I've been very hungry in my life maybe not because I'm starving of anything just because I'm hungry and I want something. And there's nothing that feels better than going and eating something that is good and it satisfies that hunger, right? right? right. It's the same as when we walk with the Lord. We, when we hunger right, for right, God, right. he says he comes and he fills right. us with good things, with good deeds that are satisfying to our soul. Who needs some satisfying this morning in one of the areas or some areas of your life? I know I do. And when that is satisfied by God, that is the living water. Amen. It is the bread of life. And it is something that is everlasting. And it will last and last and last. When we eat and feel satisfied and we're full, there's nothing that... Well, there's probably other things, but it is a wonderful feeling. 
And it's the same in the spiritual realm. When you're hungry, he fills, fulfills his promises in our lives. You know, when God gives us promises, he promises to fulfill them. <laughs> and he is faithful to fill us, to lead us, and guide us. And I just have it strong in my heart this morning that God is a chain breaker. And then we Amen. sang that song. Okay. He is a deliverer, and he wants to break things in our lives that causes us to, to not hunger after God. That's not a good place to be, right? He wants us to know that he is the one that wants us to be hungry as a deer pants for the water, hungry and thirsty after God. Amen. He comes and he breaks chains in our lives and he wants to set free and deliver. And you think, well, I don't, I'm not a drug addict. I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm not just talking about addiction. I'm talking about any little thing in our lives that pulls us away from God. Amen. Any little thing. God wants to break that in our lives, and he wants to set us free. Amen? And break those. So let's trust God this week. Let's ask God to search our heart. What is in my life that I need to have Jesus break? Because he wants to break chains in our lives. Amen? Because he promises, I come to set the captive free. And he is faithful to his word. And so he says he wants to come, and he wants us to satisfy the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. And I know I want to be filled with the good things of God, don't you? Right. Because when you're full, you can pour out in other yeah. people's lives. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, is all about bringing him glory in everything we do and everything we say and how we reach people for the glory of God. Amen. Well, it's good to see everybody here this morning. I'm glad you made it out with us. We welcome those online too. We're glad you're here and there. We um, thank you for being with us. If you're a first-time guest, we welcome you. Uh, we have a gift for you um, in the foyer. If you would like to go out there and receive that, that would be great. We also have a perforated piece of paper on our bulletin. If you want to fill that out, we'll send you a letter. And thank you for being with us here today. If you're online, you can go and click on our webpage and say get connected and get connected that way and we will contact you and, and thank you for joining us. I have a few quick announcements that I want to share this morning. One is that right off to church this morning, there's a VBS lead, leader meeting. Our VBS is coming up this summer. And Ms. Kristen needs some great volunteers and helpers. If you would like to participate in that, she would uh, love to have you come upstairs. She has some pizza for you, and she just wants to get you connected in that area and to help her out, and she'll give you dates and times and all that kind of thing. So if you could do that right after service, she would love to, love to have you up there for the summer VBS. We've had great VBSs at this church and we really reach a lot of people, and so it's an awesome ministry. And I think it's only two days and two days, so it's not a whole week, it's a great time. So if you can help meet her upstairs afterwards in the kids' church, and she'd love to have you. Wednesday nights, our Bible studies are continuing. It's good, it's a John Bevere study, right? You were here, it was excellent. Come join us this Wednesday, it's not too late um, to jump in at any time. We will serve some snacks at 6.45 and at 7 we will start and there's childcare for 10 and under. And then also a book club is coming up May 16th. We're reading Prophets by Frank Peretti. You better get reading, it's good. Um, if you want to be a part of that, the info's in the bulletin and we would love to have you join us. All right, there's a few other things here. Uh, make sure you take a note and look at them and... Uh, if you have any questions, just contact us and we'll be glad to fill you in. If you want to hand out offering envelopes, that would be great. And while um, that's happening, Jack's going to uh, share quickly about prayer for uh, Israel that we're all praying for. So uh, let him come and share how you can be involved in this prayer. Thank you. Blessings. So um, there's a worldwide event starting actually today. There's 21 days of prayer, fasting and prayer for Israel. Uh, and so this clipboard is going to be being passed around. There's a blank sheet behind this one because this was just about full. So if you want to pray and the sheet on the front is full, just put your name on the back sheet, the date you want to pray, and your phone number. 
and you'll get a call the night before to make sure uh, you remember that that's your day of fasting and prayer. When I say fasting, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, food. Just whatever you want to fast is fine with us. Just remember that that will be your day of prayer, so sign up on that. Um, then I want to read a scripture about that real quick. It says, I do not want you to be ignorant. This is uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 25. I do not want you to be ignorant. That means we need to listen up of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of Gentiles has come in. But we know that that happened so that we could all be saved. But God's gifts and callings, it says a little bit later in that chapter, are irrevocable. Right. And so God wants all the Jews to be saved. So also Israel will be, be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godless Jacob, the godliness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Uh, Paul, would you come forward? We have our own completed Jew here. I hope that doesn't sound politically incorrect or whatever, but I don't really care. Uh, he's going to, he is the one that is starting off this prayer session today. So what better person to lead us in prayer for that? Shalom. Let us pray. Abba, we come before you lifting our hands to you and raising up the nation of Israel. We pray, Abba, for unity amongst all the people there a cessation of all the problems that are going on, the people would stop and listen. And mostly, Lord, they will listen to you. We pray, Abba, for safety, for shalom to go throughout the whole land. We pray, Abba, for shalom to go across the borders to stop the hate and the, the bloodshed that is happening. Abba, we pray for unity within the country because the enemies are coming around us. But we know, Abba, that you will protect us. We pray, Abba, mostly for unity of the Messianic community. And that their hearts would be open for the gospel. As they put the gospel out, that the, the my people would wonder, what is going on? What is this New Testament? What is this Brit Hadashah? Who is this person, Yeshua? And they will realize that it is you. You the one, the Messiah, the Mashiach that came to us. It was promised by Moshe many, many thousand years ago, Abba. We lift all this, all this, Abba, Beshem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, appreciate that. And um, you can feel free also, of course, to go online with your computers and look under IHOP, which is not International House of Pancakes, it's International House of Prayer in Kansas City. And they're the ones I think have a huge part in this uh, prayer time that begins today. And they'll get more details about that and more times that folks are praying. Uh, they're trying to raise up 100 million intercessors for the next 21 days. Not sure how successful they were, but I know they had at least 1 million. Uh, committed to praying for the salvation of Israel. They're praying for the south of the blinders to come off their eyes and for salvation to come to that nation. Amen. And the good thing is that if God hears those prayers and God answers prayer. Amen. And so it's not in vain at all. There's going to be some really great things break loose uh, for Israel. And um, you know, sometimes when we pray, it seems like all hell breaks loose. But sometimes God wants all hell to break loose so he can cut his head off. How many folks know that a rattlesnake under your house can't be killed till you get him up under your house then you cut his head off okay so sometimes god lets the devil manifest to cut his head off and that's just what how way god works so beyond that um we do have some birthdays happening uh, one i know about this week uh or one of our worship leaders we've had here for some time is christy we were even here this morning in the foyer well tell her just yell at her in the, in the foyer there uh, i usually pray for folks and get a scripture that god would give me um, Colossians chapter 1 verses 10 through 11 it says that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience long suffering with joy as so I really believe you take that to heart God is telling you again he's going, to, he's going to give you a whole lot of fruit in different endeavors you're actually taking on this year okay so if we believe God for that it's going to be taking place more and more and we have a blessed year ahead of you. 
Did I miss any birthday folks having a birthday today or this week coming up? Anybody just wave your hand at me if I miss any birthday people. As far as anniversaries go, this is the wedding anniversary number 42 for Cheryl and myself Amen. tomorrow. So praise God for that. We're looking for the 42 more good years of marriage. And should the Lord carry and should all the pills work. Amen. But uh, actually, I don't, want, I don't want to be here 42 more years because that would put me way over 100. But I do want to be here as long as God wants me here. Amen. But I appreciate God putting Cheryl and I together back at Christ for the Nations. Got married the last day of school and it's been 42 adventurous years. And there's many more adventures still left ahead by God's grace. And also, this is the um, anniversary week for Ephraim and Susan Veal. Susan, she's out today, is that right? But she's uh, out somewhere, I'm sure, with her, with her daughter. They do a lot of volleyball and so forth. But she's uh, one of our worship leaders. And we just tell them, God bless you. Have a great anniversary as well. Anybody else having a wedding anniversary this week? Just wave at me if I missed any anniversary people. Let's have our ushers come to the front. Let's pray blessings on uh, Christine Weaver. It's all the prayer to herself. And all the anniversary folks as well. Amen. So, Father, we do thank and praise you, God, uh, for Christine. We bless her this day together. And we say, may it be the best year she's had on earth yet. May the promises you have for her be yes and amen. May you, God, give her a path that's drenched with the dew of heaven and be a light to her path. Give her direction, God, in her life. And we agree together that she shall be very fruitful in the days ahead. This shall be a year of fruitfulness, God, for her. In Jesus' name. Amen. We bless these couples, God, having anniversaries. Uh, we say, God, your hand be upon each one of us. Let our marriage and our love for each other go stronger, deeper, wider, and more vibrant. Help us, God, to be a, a, a beacon of light on what a godly marriage looks like. And we praise you, God, for the blessings to put us together by your spirit. Our Father, what is sown today also this offering, that it be used for your glory. We pray, God, rebuke the devourer of thy name's sake in our behalf. Bless the folks in our congregation that did God be broken off of them and all of us. And we praise God that we have wisdom in the realm of finances to not just receive, but also to give according to your will in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Ushers helping us out here. Appreciate you folks. We have our, we're blessed today to have a return guest. A lot of you folks have not met because they haven't been here for several years. Um, I met Chuck and Suzanne years ago. They've got a lot of common friends of ours. When I, whenever Cheryl and I went to Spain about a month ago, um, our good missionary friend there named Wade and Maria Weaver, this is how she is um, his best friend. He tells me this is his best friend, Chuck Kalajewski. And Chuck's gone to Spain, and I was surprised. He said in Spain, this man had crusades of, of over four to 500 people. And God did miracles, healings, and just tremendous things broke out and broke loose in Spain. So love to hear more about that as well. His wife, Suzanne, is also very special because she also is, is from the Wichita, Kansas area, where I'm from myself. And so we're not in Kansas anymore. That we're in Texas now, and our accent's been changing ever since. But we appreciate Chuck. He's been a missionary in Latin American nations all over the world as well. He's fought through many battles with health, and somehow God's given him grace to go on airplanes and travel regardless of what's gone forth in the, in the health realm for him. He's got a tremendous anointing for prophetic ministry, but also, I know, for healing miracles and just an apostolic brother who's a real encouragement to leaders and pastors and the body of Christ. And him and his Suzanne are just a real precious couple. We're glad to have them back here. So let's give Chuck a real warm Tree of Life Church welcome as you come here and take your liberty. Mic on? Yep. All righty. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hallelujah. Worship was wonderful. Enjoyed that greatly. I would like to say, you know, talking of, uh, of Spain and the great work that's there, uh, of course, Wayne Maria pioneered the work that was there. It wasn't long after, it might have even been before, that it was legal to uh, preach. Um, evangelicals were not allowed. In fact, even today, it's difficult for them to find um, venues large enough to be able to have a conference um, because they were evangelicals. And so um, it's just an extremely strong spirit which is there that God has just been, first of all, I say in Jesus' name, it's already broken, already, already was broken. 
And the activation of that has been taking place. Amen. And Wade and Maria have been extremely faithful uh, in the work that they pioneered there. And Suzanne and I were fortunate that uh, when they went over that uh, we had met them in uh, Matawala, Mexico, where they are ministering for a couple of years uh, out of Brother Pruitt's church. And um, uh, they then went to Spain because Maria is Spanish and so began, began to work, which, was a, which is a pioneering work. And there's a difference in pioneering and doing establishing work. Uh, that means the work's already been done, the land's already been cleared, a lot has been prepared, and now you can begin to start building. And so I was, um, I was blessed because we began to go at Easter time. Wade would invite me at Easter time down in Sevilla, uh, and uh, there would be a conference there where probably a, a group of about 10 or 15 churches would come together, and we would uh, have a conference on uh, you, you have to understand that Semana Santa, Holy Week, is a big deal in Spain. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it is a big deal. And um, we're holding meetings at the same time. And um, so that would begin on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so we, we started that probably hmm, uh, coming up on 40 years ago. And uh, I was watching it on uh, Facebook, and I, the people who were preaching were the sons of the pastor um, that we started with, working with there, and found in that particular conference. I think there's probably 20 or more churches that gather together the group. Uh, listen, when you're, when you're a group of about 10 and there's another group, you like to get together. Yeah. Amen? Because uh, there's a lot of spiritual battles that are, that are over there. It's not, it's not like here, you know. Um, where there's churches on it. My gosh, with, within a two-mile area of my, my local church, there's probably 20. Yeah. Well, it's not like that in Spain. It's not like that in other parts of the world. And so I was watching, and I can remember seeing these two young men because the first time I drove up to their apartment, uh, we drove in the parking lot, Wade said, oh, that's uh, their two sons up there, you know, on the little balcony in their diapers. And now today they're out there preaching the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. One's preaching the gospel, the other's an evangelist and prophet, works prophetically. And school, I, I just saw him. He was in, I know, Finland. He was here, there, and everywhere. So I love seeing that another generation grab a hold of it, rise up, and take it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Uh, I do confess sometimes it feels like we've kind of been set back a tad. But, uh, you know, we're still here. We're still working, right, Brother Mike? Right, Brother Mike? We're still here working. Uh, just, just, there's no statute of limitations because you get over 70 that God doesn't use you anymore. He doesn't heal you anymore. Or somehow his promises are diminished. Can't find it in the book. Till your last breath, every promise is true in yours in Christ Jesus. So I'd like to just lift up Wayne and Maria. I thank you, Father, for them. I thank you, Father, for this man and woman who have dedicated their lives to, to the preaching and the, 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 of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sacrifices, Lord, which and struggles which have been made, Father, are, have borne fruit, yes. have borne great fruit, Father. And I thank you that everyone who's ever invested in them takes a share Yes. In all the labors which yes. they have done, Father. Yes. So I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, that that fruit continues to grow in the yes. nation of Spain yes. today and is going to other parts of the world because of that. Yes. Amen. 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 Ah, praise God. Well, talking of birthdays, I, I guess I just have to boast a little bit because uh, May 2nd was my 53rd anniversary of being a believer. And I celebrate that uh, every time. Uh, there were two, two young men, I was 19 years of age, and two young men, and we were out doing what uh, young men did at that particular uh, late 60s. 
And we were out doing that business and looking for that business and finding that business and et cetera, et cetera. And, and then all of a sudden, God opened my heart to where I was, or maybe better said, where I wasn't. That led to a somewhat tormenting night of which one of the brothers needed to bail out. It got a little too much for him, so we had to take him home. The other one, though, he perceived that God was working in me, stuck with me, and we went. To, we were headed to a certain place for a reason, which is a long story. Uh, but what ends up happening is um, I end up in a prayer garden at 2 o'clock in the morning with a man sitting in it. He tells me, Chuck, all you have to do to receive the Lord is reach out. I reached out and God hit me. When I got up, I began walking ever since. So it's 53 years. I celebrate. I've always thought birthdays should be more celebrated with the parents and the child. That's really their connection. Is it not? It's not just, I know we celebrate the child and they're getting older, but really, and in particular of that, the mother. So I just am thankful for the Holy Spirit. I found out, uh, I went to church that morning. I tried to go at six, found out they weren't open, which was disappointing to me because in all the movies, I mean, the churches are open 24 hours. So I was a tad disappointed at this one. Uh, but anyway, I, went, I, I got there. I ended up joining the church. I ended up, someone grabbed a hold of me, said, come to a prayer meeting. I had to ask him what that was. I was so ignorant of things. And um, I, I love where her comment to me was. Her answer was, I said, well, what, what, what do you do at a prayer meeting? She says, well, we talk to God. And somehow that grabbed me. What? Y'all are going to have a meeting and y'all are going to talk to God. See, when it's put in those terms, it's a little bit less laborious thinking. A little less boring. It's more sets an expectancy. Because I asked her, I said, well, does he ever talk back? <laughs> and she said, sometimes. Well, that just, that put the hook in my jaw. I was there an hour early because I figured this church about 800. I figure I want a seat. I don't like cheap seats. I want to be up in front where you can Amen. see the action. Yeah. And I wanted to get in there. And two women came, and that was it. And that was okay because um, we went into a little chapel, and we, within a couple of hours, uh, I was prayed for to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, so within 24 hours, I got saved and I got, I tried to get water baptized, but they didn't have the thing ready. So I had to wait a week for that. But uh, anyway, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and ready to go. Amen. So praise God. So I just want to thank the Lord. I just thank the Lord for the things that I've seen him do, the way he has sustained Suzanne and I and our family, that his promises are true. It does not mean that there's not an adversary who doesn't try everything in his power to prevent those. And yet God still reigns in every situation. Amen? So praise God. I, I just wanted to share that. I love uh, Wayne and Maria. And I'm thankful y'all were able to go and, and be with them. They don't have... A lot of visitors, so I know that encouraged them a lot. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Grace that enables us to do that everything that you ask us to do, Lord. There is nothing you ask us to do that you don't empower us to be able to do by your grace, Lord. I think you that, Father, where once we were deaf to your voice. But now you've given us ears to hear clearly what the Spirit is saying to us. Once we had hard hearts, now our hearts are made pliable, hungry. We invite you to plant the Word of God into the good ground of our hearts. Mm -hmm. That we can be fruitful. Mm -hmm. And people can come into our lives and pick and taste and see that the Lord is good. 
And finally, Lord, we are prepared to reorder our behavior if necessary based on what you speak to us. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Brother Mike, just stand for a second. This is Brother Mike Vega, pastor of Baptist Church. Been working with him about 40 years. Uh, I'm sorry, Bastrop. Yeah. I don't know why I said Baptist. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 we'll work. We'll squeeze that in correct one way or another. Anyway, sorry about that, but a long period of time. Brother Mike, I, while we were worshiping, I saw you and Debbie. Uh, I, 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 you were on a vessel that God had chartered. It's a chartered vessel. It's not a purchased vessel. It's a time to be able to enjoy wherever that vessel is going. To see some things you've not seen. To experience some things you've not experienced. But a time of peace and rest restoration but there is a place of debarkation Amen. it won't go to several ports it'll go to a singular port and that you'll know there is the place Amen. to work amen amen, amen. amen. <laughs> brother mike I saw you standing, there was a big bowl, and it's, it's full of uh, uh, like silver dollars or something, I can't exactly tell, but it's big coins, and that you reached in and you grabbed a large handful, so they're, they're pretty good sized coins, and you, grab, you grabbed a hold of them, and then you, 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 you walked out into the open, and you just began to scatter them. There was 12 coins in your hand. And each coin represents a country. In each country, there will be $25,000 worth of value invested in those countries. I say value because I don't want to limit that to, to strictly dollars. Uh, it, it certainly could include that, I, but I, I'd like for you to more hold on to the word value. Uh, of that which you will bring with you to impart into them. Uh, as uh, you and I both agree on, we're here to impart a resident anointing to people and not take it and go back home. We impart and leave it and let it do its work. Amen. So, praise God. All right, um, we're going to be in Luke chapter 24. I pray you had a wonderful uh, resurrection day. I'm sure you did here. Great celebration time. All over the planet, they're celebrating he is risen. Hallelujah. As much as the enemy has attempted to try and discredit that testimony, the validity of what took place, he's tried to destroy. And yet, millions upon millions and millions and millions of people believe that he is risen. Right. And that's the difference in a lot of other, either religions or spiritual people or spiritual movements. Uh, there have been others who were prophets, others who worked miracles, others who claimed to be messiahs. All throughout history, there has been those. Some who have even, even were wonderful teachers and people even today live by some of their words. Some were even martyred for the cause of what they stood for. But none did the Father raise from the dead. Amen. None. Amen. That's what makes 
our God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. There's the power of the Father to raise his son from that too. And so we've just come off the celebration of that, but also in scripture. We're just now coming off that. Jesus, of course, is uh, raised from the dead. We could see earlier in chapter 24 um, that uh, the women have gone to, up to the, uh, to the tomb uh, to take spices and things, and they found the stone rolled away, and they went in. There was nothing there. They were perplexed about it. And, uh, two men stood by them in the shining garments and... Uh, they were afraid and bestow their, you know, your people are often a little afraid when, when angelic beings appear. And I think there's a reason for that. Uh, I, because I think they hang around God. I think they hang around in his presence. I think they shine or a reflection of what's generated out of our God. And so when they come down here, they're going to be different. They can be disguised in, as regular folk. That's another interesting thing about that. Right. You know, they, they could do that. Yeah. And so they tell him that he's not here. Why are you, why are you here? Then they come down, and so they tell the, the disciples, he said, uh, he's not here, but is risen. I like that term. Is risen. Still risen. And as you and I know, that uh, I think it's uh, May 18th. Is that right, my love? That uh, May 18th is the uh, Ascension Day. And so that's, uh, well, I like celebrating Ascension Day. Amen. 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 Uh, and I like what's going to happen on the 28th of this month, which is the celebration of the advert, advent of the third part of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, who's doing the work in us today, who's a representative of God today. And Jesus is seated beside his father. Yeah. The offering has been given and accepted. Yeah. Praise God. So I like, we, 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 we try to do a big celebration. I, I, I like, I like uh, you know, uh, Advent Day, you know, Christmas. Uh, we celebrate that. Uh, we do, of course, Resurrection Day, but we do equally a celebration yes. of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, because yes. Uh, what do you tell them? Don't lead. Don't do anything. Okay. Until you receive power. My mind. Because that's what you're going to need to do. And they were changed from then on. Yes. Here we have a, a group of individuals who had given for three years everything they had. You can imagine that you're at your work of whatever you do. And Jesus coming up to you and saying, follow me. And they got up out of the boat and followed him right then. There's not any going home and checking, packing a lunch, getting a pocket full of money, telling the folks, they got up and walked with him. See, there's something extremely powerful when God calls an individual. Yes. Come on. When he says, follow me, there is something that grabs you. And you're prepared then. I didn't know what was ahead when God called me. All I knew was he called me. I was asking him, I was just asking God, I want to do something. I want to do something in some kind of work for you. I don't know what that is. Cleaning toilets, whatever it is. Something to show you that I love you and appreciation for what you've done for me. Wasn't long after that, I heard that. Follow me. It is a powerful impartation of a word of God to an individual that changes the course of their life forever. Now, for me, it was interesting because the Lord said, you know, kind of follow me. Uh, I've called you to be a prophet to the nations. And I said, well, thank you, but I don't know what that means. Been to Mexico, ate a few tacos. Um, prophet, I don't, I don't even know what that means. Don't even know what that means. Uh, and I've been spending 53 years learning about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the thing that was interesting to me was, you know, people would 
you know, there's a bunch of us who got saved in the, in, in, in the charismatic movement, right? A bunch of us young folks. Uh, and uh, everybody wanted to do something for God. So periodically, people, we'd all get together, and sometimes with our, some of our elders uh, in the churches, uh, you know, and uh, well, what do you think God's called you to do? And I say, well, prophet to the nations. And I get the strangest looks. <laughs> I, would, I would get this... Who in the heck do you think you are? Yeah. I was so naive. I just didn't know anything. I wasn't raised in this church. Everything that I knew about Jesus was basically off of movies. And what I learned in school, public school. Remember that? We prayed in public school. Come on. Yes. We pledged in public school. Say that, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the disciples, I could see how they've spent all this time invested. They were, they were, they were so excited. The miracles that they've seen, the words they heard. Think about those fireside chats. Think about being pulled aside in Jesus' talk. Even if he rebukes you. I'm not, I don't understand why we're afraid of a rebuke or correction. I don't know. I don't know why. It is for our betterment. I guess it because it usually hurts. It hurts some area that needed to be pointed out to so that God could take care of that. And these guys got a few things God's going to point out to them. So you can understand, I, you know, when I read the Bible, I kind of put myself there as, well, maybe the 13th disciple. I wouldn't say the 13th apostle, but, I, you know, the 13th uh, <laughs> disciple. And I'm walking around just like them, particularly the first time I read through the, the Gospels. I'm kind of walking with them, kind of like them, learning this for the very first time. And Jesus saying amazing things just, just baffled me in many, in many ways. And so now their hope has been mutilated, friends. Murdered in a most hideous fashion. And buried as if the finality of it. And now here comes these sisters. Thank God for you sisters. Thank God for you mothers and you grandmothers and you great grandmothers. I mean, I hear testimonies all, of, all through my life. I've heard testimonies of how, oh, I was doing this and doing that, but I, my grandmother prayed for me and I got saved. I rebelled out of church. I sat there. I hated church, blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, they're up standing preaching the gospel because somebody prayed. I don't, I'm not sure there's a more powerful, powerful access over somebody's life of that of, of someone in your family. Because you, you already have that natural connection. And you're, you're believing God for that spiritual connection to be done. So thank you, sisters. So the sisters come. Hey, we went to the tomb. Look there. Nothing's happening. These two guys told us he's gone. He's risen. They said he's risen. And then the guys, of course, oh, well, you know how them sisters are, you know. They're always getting together and praying and coming up with something. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank God for this. We come to now down to 13. Now, behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village uh, called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all things which had happened. So these two disciples are walking, you know, they've all split up. They, they tried, they're now hiding and collected, uh, cloistered in some, some house of some kind because of fear of the Jews, fear of what they did to the master, they could also do to them. They struck the shepherd, they'll strike the sheep. And so they're huddled up they're confused. 
Their hope has been drained from right, them. Right. And here's these two brothers going to Jerusalem, right? And they talked together all these things which had happened, so it was while they conversed <laughs> and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near mm -hmm. and went with him. All right. But their eyes were restrained. I think the King James says, uh, Holden, uh, uh, Holden, they, they couldn't recognize him. Uh, and their eyes were restrained, so they did not know it was him. That tells me something. That tells me that God might be in my present, and I can't tell it. Preach. Now you preach it. Come on. Come on. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you're walking? And, and you're sad. Then the one whose name was uh, Clophus answered and said to them, <laughs> Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and you have, you have not known the things which have happened there in these days? So everybody knew it. Everybody knew that what, what was taking place. And he said to them, what things? And they said, I love, I love this particular scripture. I love this particular scripture. The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Uh, just, the, just the truth of the matter, you know, if you want to be, if you want to be something before people, you better be something before God first. Amen. Amen. Uh, just something in one's own mind, their own char charisma, their own, you know, natural talents that they have. The truth of the matter is, is that when you come to Christ, those die. Yes. Those are crucified in Christ. Everything about your life is crucified in Christ when you turn your life over to Him. Right. There is no contract out there. Hey, just receive me and keep yourself. It's, it's kind of preached in a form. Here's the ticket. Take the ticket. Come to church. Pay, pay the fee. Get involved if you want to. That's not the covenant which is out there. The covenant which is out there is this. Everything, Jesus gave everything to purchase this right away for us that we could come to him and we die to everything in us to then take on ourselves everything he has for us of himself and what he wants us to become and be. Now, it's not strange that God then takes those dead things and changes them and anoints them, empowers them. It's not as if, uh, uh, you know, so you have a certain talent and then you get to, get to be a Christian and you, that, that goes away, you can't paint anymore. No, I think you're going to paint uh, uh, something that's going to be a, a lot more inspirational. So, the, so that you understand the agreement out there is there's an exchange. There's no such thing as just receiving Jesus as Savior and not receiving him as Lord. It's together. Now, I didn't know all that. I didn't know all that. I just, I just knew when I met him, I wanted, I wanted everything. I didn't want anything partial. I wanted the whole thing. I was thankful I knew I wasn't going to hell. That was exciting to me. But what was more exciting was I fell in love with him. I fell in love with him. And that's why I continue to follow him. Because I'm still in love with him. Praise God. So the disciples, he, Jesus is mighty. He's a prophet. And he's mighty in deeds and words. Amen. No one taught like him. The miracles unheard of miracles but before God and the people and how the chief priests and rulers uh, delivered him to be condemned and crucified I mean you just kind of run over that word so easy uh, condemned and crucified and then you go on man you know Mel Gibson's movie I, can't, I just can't watch it 
I, I, I just sometimes, I, even the movie King of Kings, some of the older, you know, big movies back in the 50s and so, when it comes to the crucifixion, I, I just, it's just difficult for me to see them do it to him. I hear you. Amen? Amen. But we were hoping, here's what they were hoping for. But we were hoping that Jesus was going to redeem Israel. There's two prophecies in there about the Messiah. The Messiah who's going to come and redeem Israel and put all the enemies under their feet. And I guarantee you, if you lived under the Roman regime, you were believing for that one. The oppression these people lived under. Two thieves crucified. What did he say? What did he say? Pilate was it? He said, I don't find anything, you know, any." But I'll scourge him. You know how many people didn't survive that? Right, right. Deep. I'll just scourge him. Deep. This is the attitude of this regime. So certainly, they thought in that day when the Messiah comes, this is what he's this is what he's going to do. He's going to get rid of all those. He's going to be king of kings. He's going to rule here, and all this, our enemies are going to scatter. They just forgot. I, and I think we do the same thing. I think what we fight and what's around us and what we contend with, that's what we think God ought to deal with. Right. And sometimes God's not that concerned about that. I don't think he's concerned about anything. He wants to deal with something else. So no, he didn't come as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords to rule and reign. He came to submit, yield of his life, be tormented, humiliated, humiliated. Our God was humiliated, stripped, beat, torn asunder, well, even before he got to the cross. Right. So you can see why the disciples, their hope had drained from them. But there's a second one. There's a second promise, and that was him coming as the lamb to be slain for a bigger deal than just Israel. Israel is inclusive of that. It also now extended to the Gentiles. You gotta understand something. We Gentiles were without hope. Right. We had no access to the promises of God. We're excluded from the commonwealth of Israel. We're outside and you can't get in. Except by now, the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> we were hoping that he would do that. Okay, yes. And certain women in our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. They came saying that, they, hey, they saw a vision of angels. Uh, it said he was alive. And some of those who were with, uh, went with us to the tomb and found just as the women said, but him he did not see. And then he kind of rebukes them. <laughs> oh, foolish ones. Mm. How And slow of heart to believe in all of the prophets, what all the prophets have, what all the prophets have spoken, not just what you select out of it to meet whatever situation you're going through. Oh my. Come on. But the whole gospel, which includes what you're going through and much more. I believe there is so much that the hand of God keeps away from you and I. There is a principle that if we will walk with him, there is a principle of avoidance that you will not have experiences 
that others do because they ventured out of, of that covering and ended up getting trapped in some situation. What we may have is attacks of the enemy, strong attacks of the enemy, unfair attacks of the enemy. Some of the dirtiest things I've seen uh, uh, the enemy do, you just go, I, I can't believe it. And yet God's with us in all those situations too. You know that. Absolutely. If you've walked with God any period of time, you faced oppression, you faced the enemy lying to you, you faced uh, that uh, your your old man trying to come up out of the grave. Let me let me let me live some. I know you're saved and all that, but just let me come out and we'll play together just at night time. The wife goes to sleep and come on out and we'll play. And then I'll go back. And then long after that, he's got control. People are in bondage and that's why we sing songs about deliverance and songs about breaking chains. Those chains aren't just the original chains, which thanks God about that, but any chains are bracelets a bracelet can turn into a chain. Oh, look how nice it looks. How sparkling it is on my hand. Only to find out that it's a chain. God breaks all of those. All of those. All of those. We just keep walking with the Lord and loving the Lord. He's going to keep guiding us and empowering us by the Holy Spirit. And we're going to end up at the place he wants us to end up. I could look at 53 years and see the evidence of it. I've got men of God, like Jack Adams and Mike and Mike. I, 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 I can look back in their lives and we, we've got the evidence to lay out before you. Amen. And that's not because one's a prophet or one's an apostle or one's a pastor, a teacher, evangelist. It's because we're the children of God, just like you. Would you have access to that for your family? So no, I was a little surprised. I was a little surprised after a couple of days that, you know, I finally kind of landed back to earth. And I had an evil thought. And it perplexed me. I just hadn't had any teaching. I didn't know any of the word of God. I thought, I thought that would never happen again. Go, go to my pastor. I had an evil thought. I guess I'm not saved. I was serious. It upset me. So he began the process of, of mentoring me, getting me in the word of God, to get that word of God in me so that I could understand. Come on. Right? Yes. Amen? For all Amen. of us. Okay, let's keep going. I forget where I'm at. Angels, the tomb... Oh yeah, Jesus rebuked his own foolish ones, so of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? That was the other prophecies that are out there about that. There is, that other prophecy has not been forgotten. That prophecy for Israel has not been forgotten. That prophecy of him ruling and reigning on earth has not been forgotten. That he will do that upon his return. That's the next great event. That we church for over 2,000 years has been hoping and waiting for. And the world goes, you fools. You fools. You say he's going to come. All I know is that I'm closer than any other generation of believers today. And if I'm here tomorrow, I'm a day closer. And if I don't see it, my kids might see it, my grandkids. And there's going to be a great outpouring, man. I, I tell you, we've been celebrating kind of the, the 60s and 70s outpouring of the Holy Spirit with the movie and uh, kind of rehearsing all God did. Hey, I believe that the next outpouring is something that's uh, you, yes. the final one. Yes. 
the final gathering, the final harvest, Israel included in that. And instead of our God being humiliated, Satan is publicly humiliated. When Jesus rose from the dead, Satan was publicly stripped and humiliated. Every time you get victory, every time a chain is broken off of you, he is publicly humiliated. And our God is glorified. All right. Amen. We're about through. Blah, 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 blah. And then he begins to instruct them, beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded to them in all the scripture from Moses through the prophets. Wow. Uh, expounded the things, uh, the scriptures uh, concerning himself. That would have been quite a little lesson to have been sitting on. Would it not? Wow. And we don't even know who these are, these uh, uh, well, it's one Cleophas. Yeah. Okay, and so they said to one another, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, then they drew near to the village where they were yeah. going, and yeah. he indicated that he was going to go further. But they constrain him. I would too. I constrain him. Abide with me. All right, all right, all right. There you go. Don't go past the by. They were in the boat, and their lives were in jeopardy from the storm. And if they had not cried out to get in with me, into the boat with us, help us, it seems to me he just said he would have walked on by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that simple scripture says you have not because you ask not. How simple is that? You know, I was surprised as a young Christian when I went to ask the first time and nothing happened. And there's silence. You know, I seek and I find nothing. I knock on the door, my knuckles hurt. And so I I thought to myself, well, what's the deal? Once again, I go to my pastor and I start asking, hey, what's the deal? He knew what the deal was. He took me to the scriptures and they know what the deal is. And I found out that you keep knocking, keep seeking, keep asking until it does open, until it is answered. You never give up. Amen. You never give up on your child being saved. Come on. You never give up on a family member. You never give up on a healing that you need in your body. You never give up on it. We've got a brother, 70 years of age, was just healed of dyslexia. Amen. The suffering that he had at school particularly during the 50s and 60s. They weren't really tuned into that. And he made it somehow through high school. And he learned to adapt and do this and that and another. He ended up running every computer at Texas Commerce Bank, which was the, the biggest building that's in Houston. I went to have dinner with him. Ran floors of computers. With that. Wow. Sitting late one night watching TV. I don't know if it was a video or what it was. And Rodney Howard Brown and Rodney Howard Brown knew, you know, that always that thing they tell you to do when you're on TV. Do I just extend your hand, touch the TV. Touch the TV. (laughs) You sit there and go, God, that's stupid. I ain't gonna touch that TV. (laughs) Ray got up there and he touched that TV. He went to bed and he had dreams of something being reconnected in his, in his brain all night. He woke up the next morning reading, reading the newspaper, reading whatever he could grab. His wife comes in, what are you doing? Because when you have difficulty in that area, uh, reading is not something you jump into. It's something that when you got to do it, you do it. He told me by the time he came to our church and gave the testimony at our men's meeting, he'd read 10 books. Never give up on the promises of God. There is no statute of limitations on his promises. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Okay, so we're almost here. I think we are. 
They drew the village and constrained him. Uh, and uh, uh, they constrained him, abide with us. Absolutely, abide with us. Don't, don't leave us. Don't leave us. Right. So at some point, Jesus, it was shown that it was him, right? To their surprise. And so he comes down there. They constrained him to stay, abide with us. He went in to stay with them. And now it came to pass, as they sat at the table with them, that he took bread... He blessed and he broke. Something's always going to happen. I'm telling you, when Jesus gets some bread and it's blessed and broke, things are going to happen. Amen. We did it today. Amen. Things can happen. Amen. This table is a... Amen. This table, people can get saved taking that. Because first of all, if you come up and take it, you're acknowledging something. Yeah. Yeah. You may not have a full understanding of, of what's taking place there. I've seen people healed during communion, delivered during communion, convicted during communion. That's not just some act that we do just because we do it. It's important. It's powerful, friends. Yes, All right. It is. Yes, it is. And they're, okay. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him. So it's not until they get, to, get together, he breaks the bread and gives it to them that their eyes are open. So he's at, he's at their house. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn? My, my, my. I'm telling you, friends, if, if God draws close to you, there's going to be something in you that's going to resonate. The same thing can happen when we come into the presence of evil. Something in you will resonate. Right, right. When we come into the presence of someone who has a need, something will resonate and draw us to an individual. If we will yield to that portion of the Holy Spirit in us, I, I think we would see. A, I think we'd see tremendous, tremendous things take place. Because this isn't confined to apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. This is a gift to the body. You could be, you are God's ambassador at your job, wherever you are in your community, no matter where you go, at the restaurant, you are there and can be used by God. Amen. Did not our heart burn while he talked with us on the road, while he opened the scriptures? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and told them there, the Lord is risen. Amen? I want just one final verse. I want to, uh, uh, I think it's in John, the last verse of John. Sorry, guys, I didn't get you that. It's John chapter 21, uh, which kind of follows this same pattern here at the end. And there are also many other things that Jesus did. Right. Which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. This period of time after the resurrection until the ascension was extremely important because that's yes. where Jesus goes and restores his disciples. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. He's in the restoration business, not, ah, they flunked the test, I'll get me some new ones. Too much invested in us. We bear the mark of the King of Kings. I do like in there also the scriptures because it talks about he sent me, he ate. Isn't that interesting? The resurrected body, and he, he eats a couple times during that time. Hmm. Maybe we're still going to do that, I suppose. I understood there's a feast supposed to happen, a banquet, so praise God. I don't know what. <laughs> there's just a lot of things that he's left out. Right. That's, that's so exciting to me. I always kind of hear people try and put, when they talk about heaven, the good things that they think about earth and try and chunk them up there. And I have to hope that heaven is greater. Amen. 
And any of the best that's down here. Yep, yep, yep. In fact, there's going to be a new earth necessary. Yeah. <laughs> and a new heaven. I don't know what that means. There's just so much waiting for us, friends. Just so much waiting for us. I've had a good friend. Uh, that's uh, his wife. Uh, great servants of God. She just went to be with the Lord. And I keep thinking she's now in that presence. In that place. That place of reward, that pr that place of no longer wondering, everything's clear. So he spent great amount of time. This is the point of the whole message today. He spent a great amount of time in restoring his disciples. They were fearful. He had to do something about that. They were afraid. Their hope was lost. They were scared. So he had to do something. He came to some of them personally, right? Yes. He came to these two guys. We see that he goes and, you know, he, he then goes and talks to the disciples and says, you know, even says, uh, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathes on them. Thomas wasn't in that group. So sometimes when God moves, you hear, my, well, my God moved last night and I wasn't there. Don't think you're left out. <laughs> Just get to where God's at. Thomas comes in when Jesus is there. Puts his hands in there. He's fixed. He's good. Now Peter. Ooh. Peter. Come on. Come on. Yes. So strong in himself. I get, you know, you, you know when when uh, Jesus said, I am he, and it, it says the cohort. There was a cohort of soldiers. A cohort of soldiers, soldiers right, could right. be around 600. It's 10% of a legion to come and get one man. And yet when he said that, they all fell backwards. Not only that, one guy got resurrected from the dead. He's standing there in his barrel clothes. What the heck? You know, and he gets in the group and runs off, you know, right? <laughs> Think of the things that are happening. There's no telling what can happen. Right, right. We just let God right. be God and yes. we be his people. If you come to church sitting back with no expectancy, something's up go. with that. So he dealt with Peter and Peter, praise the Lord, was restored. Yes. God's in the restoration business. Yes. He's in the chain breaking business. I don't care what bracelet you might have, something you've dealt with all your Christian life, that can be broken today. Amen. Not only can be broken today, I say to you it's been broken, and we can command it just to fall off. You can command it. You can command it. You let it get put on there, you command it to be taken off. He's in the restoration business. He's in the business of bringing us forward in the kingdom, not allowing us to digress toward the world. Because we've got a job to do as the end time believers. Yes. Yes. Every one of us are special. We're in, we're in the last days and we have a job to do. Amen. Father, I pray today. That any, where they need any form of restoration. Any form, Lord God, of change to be broken off of them. Habits. I remember walking into a service. We hadn't even started into the service. I walked in, up to the front like a just just a while ago, and, and there was a woman there, and I, I went and grabbed her hands, and then I just said, in the name of Jesus, and I, I, will, I walked back and did my, you know. That's, that was it. That was it. That's all he had me do, grab her hand, say, in the name of Jesus, and walk off. She testified to the pastor the next Sunday that she has been a constant not only chewer of her fingernails, but of her, the meat of her fingers from a child. And she was delivered of that. Wow. Just like that. Just like that. 
Just like that. Just like that today, we can also. Let's bow our heads for a second. Just so, just, just so we can give some privacy to one another. Here, here's a, something I believe is a good principle while you're just kind of resting there for a minute. I believe, you know, sometimes God asks us to do something publicly and it's sometimes hard for us to do, but when we do it, there's a public, God does something publicly right then for you. Could publicly heal you, publicly deliver you, publicly break that chain off just by the admittance that you need it done. Don't listen to that little voice, that, that little thing that, oh, I'm embarrassed, or I don't need to do that, this is foolish. Don't listen to that thing. Listen to what the instruction of the Lord is. If you have need of being delivered, some chain being broken, or some area of restoration, just stand to your feet right now. Praise the Lord. We'll just keep waiting, wait for the Holy Spirit to move on people. Thank you, Father. Okay, anyone else? All right. Anyone else? I'm going to pray. Amen. Back, Susan. I saw you. I, I saw you sitting, and I can't tell if you were a, a needle pointing something, or if you were weaving. I, I can't. Maybe it's even both. Maybe it's even both. And I saw you working at that, enjoying that, enjoying that greatly, making making something. It's, it's, it's at the place where it's not quite defined, but there's been a lot of work and effort gone to it. It's not yet com complete, but it's complete enough. And here's the instruction of the Lord. If you'll stand back from it on several paces and look at it, it will come into, it will come into clarity for you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right, Father, we come before you, your children. We're not embarrassed of anything. We answered the call that you gave today, Lord, and I thank you that these, all these, Lord God, are between you and your children. They lift them up. They cry, Lord God, out for the restoration or the deliverance, Lord, the breaking of whatever change there may be, Father. Uh, it doesn't even have to be demonstrative. We don't have to fall on the ground. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that in his name you are set free, you are healed, you are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Thank you. Nah, 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 nah. I just heard a little deal of doubt that popped through somebody's mind. I rebuke an unbelieving spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Rebuke. It's almost like a fly just flying around your head. I'm going to walk. Get away. Get away. Clarity for you Amen. of what the hand of God's extending to you today. Amen. Thank you, my God. Let's lift our hands together. Father, I'm thankful today that the enemy once again is publicly humiliated. That within this house of the Lord, your children have heard your voice. They have acted upon your word. They've done the instruction that was given to them. And they stand. And now, Lord, the Holy Spirit has moved in their life. And it is done. And Satan, there was nothing you could do to prevent it. 
let the name of our God be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Let's just rejoice for a second. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your Come in, Pastor Mike. God, God's uh, breaking some bracelets, bondages, some things off your life. So we just receive that and just thank Him for that as well. Uh, we want to receive a love offering here for our special guest. Uh, this guy's uh, been again, traveling with all over the world. He's at Ministry Beyond, just what he does himself. If you're going to write out a check today for this offering, again, make it out to Tree of Life Church, and then we'll take and make sure all that uh, comes in here goes to his ministry, which is called Jesus Our Ministries. And uh, those that are here that are going to be going upstairs, got the offering, make sure that you tell Kristen to get the, the check made out to Jesus, our ministries, okay? So praise God. I hope you guys have received some things here. You know, sometimes whenever you're hearing a portion of scripture like this from the, like the book of Luke chapter 24, uh, it's something that you need to hear that's going to stir some things up inside your own heart and your own life there that's for now and for the future. And so uh, don't just think it's just uh, someone pulling out some scriptures there just going to give them to you. It's a timely word for such a time as this, yep. and it's going to bear forth fruit that's going to remain in your life. You're going to say, Lord, I received that word. I thank you for that word. And I encourage you guys to go back and read it yourself this week or even today. Uh, I think it was Luke 24, like 13 through 35. And you'll receive some even new things from that. If you'll just do that because what God is saying today to this body. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Yes. Those of these folks are here on time and with a timely word. And it's for you. And it's for not just today or at this second. Today here in this morning. But it's beyond this as well. It's going to accomplish what God wants. So God bless you guys for being generous. Let's take and be generous today in this offering. And I appreciate you guys being here today also for a few extra minutes. We know God's done some good things. We'll have a, we're going to have a brother Helichinski here, his wife, at the front. If you guys need a prayer from our prayer partners, they'll be here at the front as well. And you can feel free to come to the front after the service here and get prayed for for whatever needs may be in your life there for healing, finances, um, whatever things may be there, relational-wise, whatever. And we're going to believe God for some breakthroughs for you guys also, even beyond this part of the service. So, Father, we do praise you and thank you, God, for Chuck. We thank you, Lord, for Suzanne. We say, God, they are blessed to follow your will. They have strength, of oh God, in their body, their lives, their soul. Their hearts, oh God, we thank you, Lord, for open doors, open heavens to them. We praise God for divine connections, even, Lord, in this uh, season, Lord, of their life. New connections, new ministries, Father God, new opportunities. And we praise you, God, that you are the one that brings forth lasting fruit in their lives, both now and the days ahead. We bless their family, the grandchildren, God, the children, the church body that they minister to as well. We praise you, God, that you use them as a blessing to them. In great and mighty ways, in Jesus' name. We praise you, God, that you're going before us. May it be a week, O oh God, full of your glory, in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you all. Can stand up here. And our prayer partners go ahead and come to the front, too, as well. You guys are officially dismissed to get prayed for or to leave here. Remember, next Sunday is Mother's Day. Don't forget your mothers. Try to get them something uh, before Mother's Day hits. There'll be some special things given out to mothers here next Sunday as well. Be a blessing. To have you guys come back here with your mothers, your grandmothers for that service. And may God bless this week. And also, there's what else? Oh, there's a VBS meeting upstairs. Is it right here in the sanctuary? Upstairs. Oh, it's upstairs. Uh, upstairs, the VBS meeting. So come to that if you can help out with vacation Bible school. It won't last a long time. But there's actually lunch and food provided for you for that. We'll see some of you guys back here Wednesday with this teaching on the awe of God by John Bevere. The, you folks that are praying for Israel, they're going to call you. Take that seriously. Pray for Israel. We're believing God for great breakthroughs. God bless you, folks. We'll see you later, you guys here back here in a few days. And we appreciate your walk and your life with God. God's doing good things. Thank you, Lord.